This is the journey to One Africa. Let me take this opportunity to cross our salons, my colleagues, elected leaders of our people, members of government, citizens, and all professionals are here to join our brother in observing this event. It is only Africa. When you have visited, there is feasting and offering of food. Because in the absence of that, you are not properly welcome. So even when you go home, you can tell all the stories. But your wife or your mother is going to say, ask you, what did they give you? <laughs> what did you eat? After saying everything, what did you eat? Because being offered food, it's the highest form of respect uh, in our own practices as Africans. And that's why if you arrive before people have cooked, they will never allow you to leave uh, without eating, because you are most welcome. So this gesture of this kind is highly uh, celebrated. I can sit here and listen to colleagues the whole night because all of them are so profound and are very clear of what we need to do. Um, and I will never be impatient because people have listened to me for almost an hour, 30 minutes a day. <laughs> so it's my turn to also listen uh, to other people. Uh, so everything else said here is well captured and they uh, will go home with it and try and implement some of the ideas expressed here. I just want to share with you one thing about the rights, because people say democracy is rights, but we don't know what is right. <coughs> the rights are not given to us by politicians. The rights are not given to us by our pastors or businessmen or anyone. You are born with the rights. The first right you are born with is a right to life. That no one immediately you are born can kill you. So where was the politician to give you that right? Because you are in a hospital, there is a nurse, there is a doctor, there is no politician there who says, from today you've got a right to life. The day you are born, you are born with the rights. And as you grow up, what are the rights? The rights is everything else that you think is right and ought to be done. And the instinct will not fail you. Because most of our people decide to suppress their instinct. That's why when someone says something wrong or someone does something wrong, without a thought process, you immediately go like, mm, 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 mm. <laughs> then you like, okay, why am I disagreeing? Then you apply the thought process. But the instinct tells you there's something wrong. But because we are survivors of patronage, that some of us do not process any skill, and we survive because of proximity to corridors of power, even when power is wrong, we're scared to say you are wrong because we know that if power rejects us, we have nothing to offer to society. So I've been there before and I fought with power and I was too young when I fought with power. And I went to do my own things. I left politics. They went to fetch me because they came after me. And I said, you're coming after me, I'll come after you. I said, I'm leaving. Leave me alone. And they followed me. And then I had to come back to politics and I attended to them. And they are victims of their own uh, agenda to want to destroy. So you will never destroy the truth. Because whether you are sleeping, whether you are standing, whether you are sitting, the truth doesn't change its shape. Because you are sitting in a particular way. So it doesn't matter. Always be on the side, the good side. So, 
the fellow fighter you gave me a very says I said something wrong about Ray Lodin <laughs> because he never took time to listen to me. So he listens to the papers and the radios and the sound bites <laughs> because if he had listened to me, <laughs> you'll hear what I said, and I can repeat it. Here. That after the elections, Raila Odinga threatened violence on the streets. Yeah. That people are going to fight, yeah. they are going to reject election results. Yeah. There will be blood on the floor of Kenya. No one, <coughs> even when you are robbed like my brother did, even when you are robbed literally daylight, you have no right to cause violence in the African communities because it's going to be black on black violence. Yeah. Yeah. Why are you yeah. Yeah. Let them, with the assistance of imperialism and colonialism, yeah. steal the elections, do what they want to do. Their conscience, not consciousness, their conscience, as they sleep in the palace, in the presidential guest house, their conscience will tell them they will not war. And that your conscience will tell you you are the people's choice. And you'll go back because of how you conducted yourself when you lost the elections. The people will have more confidence in you that this is a leader. With clear evidence on the wall that he was robbed, he still accepted and said, let's unite and move the country forward. I was not going to sit there and allow Kenyans to go and kill each other. And in Kenya, when there is election, every time, it must be followed by violence. That should come to an end, not only in Kenya, in the whole of Africa. We ought to be matured enough to know that the elections is not the beginning and the end. Yes. But because you are chasing selfish interest and that you think the age is not on your side, the time is not on your side, you want to steal now and you don't have another opportunity to steal. Mm -hmm. You want to go in irrespective of how many lives are going to be lost. People say you want to be president of South Africa, you say the things you are saying, you don't want to. You can't, you can't be president of South Africa. I'm not disparate to be president of South Africa. Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm not born uh, with an entitlement to be president of South Africa. I'm born with an entitlement to call a spade a spade mm. and not be pretentious because I don't want to die many times. I'm going to die once Ooh. and I'll live everything. My life will be live everything. So when you are scared to die, you must know you are equal as dead. <laughs> what are you living for? Because you ought to live for your truth. It is your truth that must guide you. It is the truth that must say, now we wake up, this is what we are going to do. It's enjoyable to do what you like. But if you live a lie, you don't enjoy. Why can't you just sleep? Just die. <laughs> In South Africa, there is what is called assisted suicide medical doctors can assist you to die because you're of, you're of no value you live a lie you are a fake you're a fake so don't be a fake because you you know you if you don't owe anyone anything don't go around taking people's monies and promising them lies you don't go around sleeping with other people's women you know you will have nothing to fear you walk freely if they want to do anything they will kill the body and not ideas yes. because the ideas are okay. so, the so when i heard that i was like we don't do that i don't know what happened the president Ruto has been announced there are processes in kenya that can be followed to contest elections and violence is not one of them right so today my brother says he's disappointed because of what I said about President Ruto. When you support, and I never said I support President Ruto anyway. I just said, these are the outcomes, live with them and do not engage in violence. I never said I support President Ruto. I have a duty to congratulate him if the people of Kenya said, this is our president. But President Ruto makes a presentation of who he is. He said, this is our move. Uh, and if God, I get elected, this how we're going to move. We're all in as pan Africans that we're getting some mm -hmm. that we're going to fight dollar. And we can't fight dollar in vacuum, it means we must come with our own mm -hmm. alternative currency mm -hmm. that we're going to remove 
uh, the visas that Africa should become one, that all heads of states should not follow each other to go and listen to one head of state. The state <laughs> has choose four or five of us to go and represent us. Immediately after that, saying that he does the same thing himself. <laughs> to talk them to all kinds of places. That he welcomes uh, the prince, uh, the, the, the king of uh, England into our land as to what is the agenda of this king. No one knows. And then you take the children and grandchildren of those who were killed in Maumau to come and salute the killer of their parents and do a gathering to one country. Oh, what is Pan Africanism about? And by so saying, I don't I don't I don't hate President Ruto. I'm engaging. We ought to engage. I don't subscribe to this politics of patron patronizing each other that if you love someone you can't critique what they are doing. No, uh, I have nothing personal against President Ruto. All I'm saying is the Pan-Africanist agenda, if put on the table and supported by Africans, we must defend it to the Latin. Yes. You cannot be elected in the ticket of Pan-Africanism, yes. and when you get into the office, you immediately turn against that. Yeah. And then we, Pan Africanist, yes. must keep quiet and not say anything about it. We are not going to keep quiet. Yes. And our speaking out is not a hatred, it's about reminding our leaders of what got them where they are. So, a political consciousness if you become aloof and stay in a state house, and you lose constant interaction with ordinary people on the ground and your constituents. When that political consciousness leaves you, by the way, political consciousness is a very rude visit. When it leaves, it doesn't say goodbye. <laughs> you just wake up the following day, you will say other things with like, What happened now? <laughs> but you are not aware that the political consciousness has escaped you. You start saying other things that are actually untrue. So we live in a country and in a continent and the world where social media is the thing. Where someone says, because you said this about Ruto, now you are changing because you said that about Ojinga. No, it's the principle. It doesn't matter. That we cannot go into violence in the name of President Odinga losing elections. He ought to be the first one himself to condemn it and say, not in my name. Yes. And we cannot have a president that is elected on the ticket of Pan-Africanism bringing in here the anti-Pan-Africanist the people who committed genocide in Africa, the people who continue to divide ourselves. There's no tribalism. These are the things that these people have instilled on us. You know, in South Africa, the president of South Africa comes from the smallest tribe called Venda. The smallest. He got elected president of South Africa. Why? If you are tribalists, we were supposed to be tribalists ourselves because we are one thing. There is someone who benefits out of this, who keeps on fooling it. No, 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 no. You are the majority. No, 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 no. You fought. No, no. Don't allow. There is someone who is fooling the division amongst our people. Because we are never tribalists. These people, the Maasai will tell you, travel all over. A, a continent yes. everywhere they passed in the earlier primitive society <coughs> they were never asked if they see a house and then they go in there they were never asked what tribe are you yes. we, we never asked each other those things anyone who visited our home at night was a woman was going to be provided a place to sleep and be provided food and the following day in the morning, she continues a journey. Yes. Because we did not have cars, yes. we did not have the means of transport. We walked and rested yes. in every house we saw. Mm -hmm. We never rested in a house of a Maasai because I'm a Maasai. Yes. Mm -hmm. As long as there is humanity, mm -hmm. I know I'll be safe 
I'm not going to sleep with lions. Yes. That's how we were created. And someone comes and instill. And it doesn't mean these tribes didn't exist. But they never constituted who we are. Yes. We were always respected humanity. We survived through hunting. We survived through gathering. Through different seasons. We survived through fishing. And we lived our life peacefully. So anyone who keeps on reminding us about the tribes and about which one is big and which one is small, that person is continuing the colonialist and imperialist agenda of divide and rule. We must never, and, and I've learned today, I'm sitting there, bro, from listening. People pride themselves that there are so many political parties in Kenya and these parties are, are formed on uh, you know, faces of individuals. It's, it's actually an individual, it's not a party. And I'm like, but we ought to represent something. Mm, yes. yeah. We ought to represent something. And if we represent something, then we will come together and form a party. And as to who leads, it doesn't matter because the ideas that we stand for will be represented by that particular individual. But if we suffer from you know, personal desire, uncontrollable personal desire for power will never affiliate to any other formation which is not led by myself. And through all of these divisions, Kenya will never come out. Right. Where there is no unity, you can forget. Nyerere yeah. spoke about it, that the, the, the future of this continent, if it's based on tribalism, it is bound to fail this continent. Yes. It will never succeed. I don't know. So I don't remember uh, uh, which tribe am I. I don't even know that. I always listen to ideas. Mm. Is this idea a good idea? Can we follow it? But beneficiaries, and the poorest tried that in South Africa, by the way, they created what they called Bantu stand. And then they were saying Zulus there, the Pedis there, the Tongas there, the Vendors there, Tosas there. They, were, they divided us by law and said we can't visit each other and even created a passport and created borders in South Africa. When you have to visit another tribe, you ought to produce a, a passport. But we were able to emerge in 1994 and create one state. One of the problems which was a headache after 1994 was, how do we bring all these tribalistic states together? Because everybody has got a position in that tribalistic state. I'm a, pre I'm a president of Venda, I'm a president of Siskai. How all of them were brought together by Nelson Mandela, conscientized them, politicized them, that through these divisions, these people are going to rise. We must come together. First as the oppressed, not yeah. as tribes. Yes. And then take our country yes. and we can sort out all this problem. President Mandela, though I don't agree with him, then and now, wanted this president to be the president of the ANC in the 90s. And his argument was that President Mbeki is Tosa and Mandela is Tosa. And therefore we can't have a Tosa president leaving, succeeding, Succeeded by another cause. So we need a different tribe so that we dilute this uh, Cosa Nostra. Mm. At that time, our elders had wisdom. They said, no, we need to beg. We're not electing Beggy because he's Tosa. Yes. We elect him Beggy because of his agenda of pan Africanism and that Beggy is pro. Africans. Yeah. And this one you want already is captured by the Oppenheimers because he worked for them. Yeah. Yeah. Those elders at that time when they were rejecting him, people thought they were wrong. Today we are proven right. The man, everything white, he, he worships, yeah. he loves it, he does everything for it. <laughs> All the president that came before him, if there were 100 multi-millionaires in South Africa, under all those presidents, yes, and done all of that work, there will be 10 millionaires if we are lucky to find them. Black millionaires. 
there would be 10 multi-millionaires in South Africa. 10, if we are lucky to find them, under his leadership. When he took over our country, white people took out all blacks who were in their companies and said, we don't need you now. We've got the president under our pocket. As a result, it's very rare to find a black man with money and any black man with money, they go after him. They destroy that person completely. We are 97% population of Africans in South Africa, but own 4% of the land. And the less than 8% of the population owns 86% of the land, of the mines, of the banks, of the monopoly industries, and anything that reflects wealth. You speak against that, you are a rebel, you yeah. are controversial, you are all manner of names, you must be silenced. That's the crime I've committed in South Africa. And I didn't do anything, I just said, but the economy of South Africa must reflect the demographics mm. of South Africa. Yes. If there are so many Africans, those, that same percentage must be found in the land, in the banks, in the mines, in everything. Yes. That why is the economy not looking like the parliament yes. of South Africa? Yes. Because in parliament you've got these minorities, they are there, these whites, but they are not more than this majority. But when it comes to the economy, it's something opposite. That truth, they don't want to hear. No one wants to listen to that truth. My last point is on Palestine. Palestine, Palestinians are what the Mau Maus were. If you are a descendant of the Mau Maus and you know what the Mau Maus have gone through, you won't fold your hands and allow what is happening to Palestinians. People occupy their land and then expand. When you speak, you are a, you are a, a terrorist. Yeah. We were called that ourselves in our own country. We know it. Where at night we sleeping like this, so young, male police walk into our houses, strip naked our parents, our mothers in front of us. And when you see mothers being chased out of houses in Gaza, carrying their children, those memories come back. That this is what we survived. And if we survived this, with the help of the international community ambassador, with the help that you engaged in, if we are here today having survived that, it means the Palestinians can also survive it. They don't need anything. They just need us to stand up and say yes. you cannot destroy humanity yes. in front of our eyes. Yes. Yes. Not a matter of now, my brother President Ruto, with the young parliamentarians who are supposed to speak yes. truth to power, mm -hmm. because young parliamentarians must never be scared of anything. Yeah. Even if they deal with you now, you've got time on your side. Yes. You are right. Yeah. <laughs> They don't have time anyway, they are going, leave them in the <laughs> uh, Agenda 20, Africa, Agenda 2060, you will just look at them like, where will they be? <laughs> Who will be there? But you cannot have a president who says, I'm with uh, Israel. No. no. And then as a young parliamentarian, you say, what do you mean by that? That you are with people who bomb hospitals? Mm. That you are with people who, who bomb a refugee camp. Mm. That even with the pres even if the president of Hamas ran into that refugee camp, that's the end of it. There's nothing you can do. You ought to find other means and ways to go and take him out of, out of that refugee camp. You can't do anything. If he runs into a hospital, you cannot bomb a hospital. No. Because these children, these weak people, these pregnant women, just march into a hospital, they don't know there is a president of Hamas there. And then they get bombarded. And then we must be told, no, don't say anything. We are not say the Jews must be killed, pregnant women, Jewish women must be killed, and children, no. Our problem is with the state of Israel. Yes. That is a clear and even the extreme of what we have experienced in South Africa. So. 
Here you have a president that you love so much and then say something like that and you don't say, but <laughs> chief, you are even now in a much more better position. You have a right not to say anything. Mm -hmm. Or you can say something that no one can hear. Yeah. <laughs> then that thing is called diplomatic language. Yeah. You can just stand up there and speak yeah. and then when you finish, no one hears what you say. Yeah. <laughs> but for you, a Pan-African is to stand up and say, I'm with Israel. When you are, to be a Pan-Africanist means you are on the side of the oppressed. Mm -hmm. Because Pan-Africanism is necessitated by the oppression that Africans suffer mm -hmm. in the diaspora, mm -hmm. here in the continent, and in all our countries, everywhere else where they are found. Mm -hmm. One comrade was telling me when they were in China, a Chinese child just came to me and said, why are you dating? Why are you dating? Mm -hmm. Because they're like, that's how we're being viewed. As dirty, as inferior, as people who have got no capacity to contribute anything. Right? So where people are treated like the same way you are treated, your revolutionary consciousness must kick in. That human beings must never be treated this way. Because we have been treated like that. And, and someone said I was attacking President Ruto, and I'm like, I'm not attacking him, I disagree with him yeah, on Palestinian question. I disagree, yeah. and vehemently I disagree with him. President Ruto's stance cannot be the same stance as that old man of America who can't even walk. That Tunisia, he forgets the door he used to come in. He doesn't know which door he used to go. And then Ruto speaks and Biden speaks. You can't hear the difference. There ought to be a difference between Biden and President Ruto. That the president of the dejected and the rejected masses of our people is now speaking. He can love all his Jewish friends. We've got Jewish friends ourselves. My lawyers are Jewish. <laughs> and I tell them on their face that I do not agree with what Palestine is doing. I mean, with what Israel is doing to Palestine. And if they want to walk away, they are free. But I'm not going to allow a situation where I must be patronized because I must not speak for the Palestinians because Palestinians cannot do anything. Mm -hmm. My last point is that the Palestinian question is guided by the principle of help those who cannot do anything for you if the help is genuine. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.